Hi. I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, I'm going to be speaking with you about the nine tie styles that you're going to commonly see out there. Now, it's holiday season. A lot of you men are going to be making purchases. You're going to be buying gifts for people. Perhaps you're a woman watching this video and you want to purchase a gift uh, for your husband. This video is here so that you buy the right ties in the right order and you avoid the styles which let's just say are not very versatile. They're not, I mean, it's they may be commonly sold out there but they're not going to fit into an interchangeable wardrobe. I want you guys to focus in and to understand there is a difference between being able to buy something that you'll be able to wear 20 times a year versus a tie that maybe you're only able to wear once a year. Okay? This is brought to you by The Dark Knot. Now, I spoke with the founder, Rishi. He's over in Hong Kong and he told me about his company. I'm like, okay, send me some stuff. I, I'm always a big fan of, well, not a big fan. I need to see the product. The proof is in the pudding. And guys, I'm wearing one of their neckties right now. I have about six of these in stock and I have to say the presentation, the quality of the necktie is amazing. I've seen ties sell for double this price and not have the type of presentation or the quality that Rishi has right over here. So he's over there supervising the factory, making sure that the, basically the clocks are running on time. I'd have to say he has an amazing product. I'm going to link to them down below. Go check out his company. In addition, I'm supporting this video with an article. I go into a lot more detail, provide images and I do link to The Dark Knot if you want to uh, support this really cool company. Go check them out. Okay, guys, let's get into the content. So, the nine styles. I'm going to talk about these in the order that I think that you should buy the tie. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule and I'll try to bring some of those up but uh, without further ado, the solid necktie. Guys, this is the first necktie I think any man should purchase. Blues are incredibly safe. Dark greens are nice as well. Once we start getting into orange, reds, as long as it's a darker hue, I think you're going to be fine. Don't ever buy a first tie in a neon or anything like that that's really light colored. Uh, you're also going to want to be careful of blacks. Uh, black is nice because it's incredibly formal uh, but besides funerals, it's going to be very hard to find much use or a maybe a black tie event in which you decide to actually wear either, you know, you should be wearing a bow tie but some guys pull off the necktie. Guys, go with the dark blue, go with a medium blue, very versatile, go with a dark green. Those are going to, you're going to get so many more miles. Now, be careful of knitted ties. Knitted ties usually are in solid as well. The problem with the knitted tie is actually the, the style and the shape of it. It's going to be a much more casual tie. Okay, so we've talked about solids. Let's go on to dots. Polka dots, uh, oftentimes they're called. Look for something that has a very small white dot, uh, preferably that's woven in on a muted, very similar color to what we were talking about here in solids. I've got one, it's a uh, dark green with a white dot, incredibly versatile. I wear this tie actually quite a bit in my videos. But I also have a tie in purple that has a small white dot on as well. Again, a very versatile tie because you're not having to worry about matching the dot. It brings a pattern in that you're not going to see in any of your other clothing. So actually when it comes to mixing and matching patterns, dots are awesome because you don't have to worry about them being in any other part of your outfit. So you can bring that tie in, bring in a bit of pattern and it's going to match almost anything in there. Same rules apply though. Don't go for anything neon or anything like that. Let's talk about the foulard. So the foulard, and this comes out of uh, Brooks Brothers about over a hundred years ago. They introduced this. This is a repeating pattern. Uh, if it's in a geometric shape, uh, this is going to be actually something that's pretty versatile. Again, sticking with the colors being muted. Uh, if you start to bring in something, let's say like tiny ducks or crabs or tennis rackets, which actually gets into sport ties, but I'll talk about that here in a second. Then all of a sudden you've got to be careful because that's going to be a much more casual tie. It's still a perfectly fine tie and if this is going to be your fifth or sixth tie, perhaps that would be something you would want to add to your collection, especially if you play tennis. Then have a, you know, one with small tennis rackets. That's totally cool but that's not something you're going to wear to the board meeting on Monday. However, it is something that you could wear to a Thanksgiving dinner on a Thursday. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about the Paisley style number four. Paisley, the pattern comes out of India. It has been around for a long time. The British brought it over from India and as long as it's done in a muted color uh, and when I say muted, you know, again, we're going for darker 
hues here. We're not going with bright colors. You can go with a bright paisley. However, you'll only be able to pull that off maybe once a month. Again, we're going for ties that you're going to be able to have wide, versatile uh, patterns. And the great thing about paisley, very similar to the dot, is you're not going to see this pattern except in pocket squares. However, you could still wear a paisley tie with a paisley pocket square because usually the pocket square is not showing much and people can't see the full paisley. Uh, let's go ahead and style number five, which is the sport or club tie. Very closely tied to the to the uh, to the foolard. Uh, the difference is usually with the sport or club, it has a history of you belonged to a particular club. Uh, this again comes out of uh, you know the old UK and. The way, way it used to work over there is if you were part of a reg, military regiment or part of a club, you wore those club colors or club ties. Um, sport or club ties usually have, um, they're usually a bit more fun. Therefore, they're going to be less formal. These would be ties that you would wear on a casual Friday or to a, maybe a uh, just a fun event on the weekend. Now let's talk about university and regiment ties, style six and style number seven. I did them in this order on purpose. So the way you can tell a difference from a university versus a regimental, both are stripe ties, but the way you tell a difference is university from left to right, you're basically going to slide down on university from right to left on regiment. Does that make sense? Go ahead and look at some pictures, go over to the article that supports this and I'll show this. You'll be able to clearly see this. The thing with uh, university ties. They're much more common and they're not always, rarely today are they tied to a university. You'll see some guys who went to maybe Yale or Dartmouth, uh, they'll be wearing their university tie, but that's not very common outside of those universities. And we see this a lot of pattern stripe ties and there's a wide variety of different widths of stripes out there. It's going to be safe to say you can wear this. Now, whenever it starts sliding from the right to the left going down, this is a regimental tie. Now, there are some styles out there that are candy stripes and they go from right to bottom left. However, if you see a tie, be wary of it when it does this, unless you belonged to the regimental unit. So, much like the club ties, these come out of the history of over in the UK. If you were part of a British regimental unit, you actually had tie colors that you were allowed to wear. So, that's the one thing I do warn you with regimental ties. Let's talk about plaid, style number eight or tartan. Basically, these are going to be more complicated. I've got these really low on the list because they're much harder to match. The cool thing about them, again, this is a pattern that you're not going to see normally in a lot of your other clothing. So, if you have a lot of solid suits, this is a great way. They are going to be more casual though. So, let's say you've got a light gray suit. You could wear a plaid or tartan tie with it. It's going to match the casualness of it. But if you've got a formal dark color navy blue suit, you're going to want to be careful because it will bring down the formality of the suit. So, the final style I'm going to talk about, and not every man needs to own this, although if you are a father, you probably have one of these costume ties. And I used to have a costume tie. It had Spider-Man on it. I mean, we get these as gifts. They are, when you wear this, it's not, you're not really wearing a tie. What you're wearing is, you know, a little piece of show that you love somebody enough that you're going to wear this tie. Um, so, those are the nine styles. I recommend you look at them in that order. Go check out The Dark Knot. Good company, amazing presentation. And uh, guys, I'll be talking more in the future about how to buy a tie, other things to look for, such as the strength and how to you know test them and things like that. But hopefully this helped you understand the styles. And if you want more, go check out the article over at realmenrealstyle.com. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.